Hi, I'm Jessica McLean, a third year doctoral student here at Indiana University. And we're here with Jamie from Baxter Pharmaceutical Company. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Jessica. How are you? Doing well. If you could, please tell me a little bit about yourself. I am a technical transfer manager at Baxter Pharmaceuticals. Um, I've been doing that for 26 years now. Awesome. Um, and we are involved with the transfer of sterile parenteral drug products into our facility for manufacture. Nice. So why is it so important to maintain a sterile environment at Baxter? Uh, that's a good question. Um, and a, a lot of this isn't very intuitive, but when you um, inject a drug product directly into a patient's bloodstream, you bypass the natural immunity that the body has, um, has in place. And so by doing that, if there is any contamination in that product, your body can consider that an invasion. Hmm. Um, and so what it will do, it can go into some sort of an overdrive process, which can lead to things known as sepsis. Um, and can be very detrimental to the patient. And so the last thing we want to do is create a drug product that is made to make somebody well and end up in turn making them sick. What are the consequences if we don't maintain a sterile environment? Well, one is the fact that we could send out adulterated product. Um, and that is the biggest thing that we're concerned about. So everything in our process is made to ensure that we have sterilization of equipment, sterile filtration of product, and aseptic environments in order to manufacture these products to ensure that we do not take any microbial contamination from outside the environment into that area and have a potential of getting into that product and then eventually into you. What are the steps that you take to maintain a sterile environment at Baxter? Well, it's numerous and endless. Okay. Um, and uh, <laughs> we are constantly improving it um, all the time. Um, but some of the things that we do are all of our products that we, that we manufacture, um, they're either sterilized in one way or the other. So they're either sterilized by like gamma radiation sterilization if they can, or the number one thing we do at our facility is sterile filtration. So we use filters that will take a liquid product, they'll go through these filters, these filters are 0.2 micron size filters, and it enables that any bacteria that might be in them gets filtered out if you will. All bacteria generally are the size of greater than 0.3 micron, and so that a 0.2 micron size, which is the opening of the pores inside that filter, will filter out any bacterial contamination that could potential in the product. Um, in addition to that, all the equipment that we send into our aseptic filling areas is sterilized. They go through autoclave cycles um, that have been validated to ensure that we have the lethality required to ensure there's no contamination on any of that equipment. And then our components, our vials, our stoppers, our syringes, however, what kind of a format we fill these products into, all of that comes in or is sterilized at our facility prior to use. That's amazing. That is super small, those microns. So does this mean you wear a gown? It does. And so one of the most important things is you can spend all this effort and all this money and all this time in validating this wonderful sterilization processes. And then you ultimately, as the operator in there making it happen, can contaminate it. So that last step, if you will, is the operator, the operator that is critical to this process. Um, and the operator has two things that they can involve, that they can uh, impact on. One is um, their aseptic technique when they're in the environment. And the other is that first step, the gowning that they go through in order to enter that classified environment. So how do you know if it's done correctly? Well, another wonderful question. So there's a number of things that we do when it comes to gowning qualification. Um, and there's uh, a number of steps that I'll talk to you about briefly. Um, the first is that we do observations. So we have trained people uh, that will watch your gowning and ensure that you are doing the technique properly per our procedures. Um, in addition to that, we also do what's called plating. So um, observation is one thing, but the plates do not lie. Mm -hmm. And so we have what are called triptych soy auger plates. They are essentially plates with food for bacteria. And what will happen is we will then, when you're done with your gowning, we will touch your gown in a number of at-risk locations, fingertips, arms, chest, and we'll incubate those plates in incubators um, to allow any bacteria that we may have picked up on your gown to grow. And then they will do what is called colony forming units and we'll be able to pull those plates out after um, 72 hours. We'll be able to inspect those plates and see if we have any of these colony forming units on there. And we'll show indicate if you did your gowning properly. Wow, there are a lot of steps and a lot of things could go wrong. Yeah, there are and things do go wrong. Um, and that's one of the number one things that we train in our operators um, is integrity. Um, it really comes down to the operator knowing the impact they can have on the environment and ultimately the product. The products we make, um, if they have contamination in them, it's not just a financial hit. The most important thing is patient safety. And so that training is very important and very upfront in everything we do. It's important that our operators know that they can make a mistake and that they can come forward with that mistake 
and that we can then move forward and, and address it. Um, we have an investigation process we use at any time if there's a gowning error or a gowning situation, we will address that appropriately. But the operators themselves, the integrity is critical and they know that and if they have a gowning issue, they stop and start over. How are you supposed to put a gown on to ensure that the environment stays sterile? Do you think it's possible I can try a gown on? Oh, would you like to? Absolutely. Then let's do it. So Jessica, okay. on display in front of you are all of the sterile gowning materials that you will need to aseptically gown into our classified environments. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, it's all yours. All right. Hmm. Okay, let me go. Okay, this is for your feet. Maybe my chin should be sticking out. That's probably going to not make it a sterile environment. No. I'm going to go with the gloves next. I messed up. <laughs> there were two pairs of gloves on here. I probably should have put these gloves on the floor. All right, Jamie, how did I do? Um, you still have another pair of gloves. Oh, are you serious? Okay. <laughs> no, I'm ready. How'd I do? Well, Jessica, you did your best. <laughs> Let me ask you a question now. Okay. How comfortable would you feel if I took those triptych soy auger plates and I plated you with them right now? I think I wouldn't have done as well. I would have gotten marked. Well, let me show you the proper technique. Okay, great. So in front of us here, we have um, a collection of the gowning supplies that you use to gown in our aseptic environments. So I'm just gonna walk through each one of the items with you um, before we get started. The one in front here is your first set of sterile gloves. Now all of this material comes packaged, prepackaged in a sterile environment with inside the packaging. So all of this has been sterilized. So when we open this up, the first step is that our environment has to be in an aseptic environment. So um, as you can imagine, I already have started off with a first level of gowning, um, and then I will enter in a certain classification area, and then these gowning supplies will be available for me. Um, the first step that we will do, um, and we'll show you here shortly, is the first set of sterile gloves. These are used um, to take your hand environment, if you will, before you're touching any of the ones downstream. And so we'll start off with the gloves. We'll then go into our shoe covers. And you'll notice kind of a theme when we gown. We're going to gown bottom up, OK? And so we'll start off with our shoe covers. Um, at the beginning, we'll cross over. And then what we'll do is at that point, once we're in the new environment, we'll go top down. So we'll then have a step where we put on our head cover. Um, we then have a mask that we put on um, after the head cover. And then we will have the actual gown. This will be the fun one. This is the one that involves most of the um, the technique involved, and you'll see that here shortly. Um, we'll have goggles that we'll put on, and then we'll top that off with a final set of gloves. So what'll happen is you'll have your initial gloves to protect all of the gowning material that you're putting on, and then you'll have your final set of gloves after you're done with this activity, which will be the ones that you enter in the aseptic block with. So the first step is your first set of gloves. As we mentioned earlier, they come sterilized, prepackaged, and so we would not open these until we're in the appropriate aseptic environment. So what we'll do is we'll open the first set of gloves. The nice part about these is they come designed for our activity. So we don't just purchase these anywhere. These come for specifically designed for what we want to do. The gloves pull out. They have a second set of packaging, which enables you to prep the gloves. So that's the really nice part about this. 
The first step we will do is we will slightly release the gloves from the packaging material to make it easier to put on. They're folded. The cuffs are folded, as you'll be able to see. So I'm able to grab the inside of the glove and put it on my hand. And one of the things you'll notice, a theme throughout this process, is we're always touching the inside of the gowning material. And the reason for touching the inside of the gowning material only is because that's the part that will not be exposed to the environment when we're done gowning. So the common theme you will notice throughout this process is minimal touching, if no touching at all, of any part of the gowning material that will be exposed to the environment once we're in the room. So we'll place that first glove on, as you can see. And you'll notice this cuff remains in this position, and you'll see the importance of that in just a moment. Now, outside of my glove, I will take that, because I can touch now the outside, and I will reach in, and I will grab the inside of that cuff here, and I will place my hands in here. And now I can pull that glove down. Now I can take this portion, and I can pull that cuff down. So now I've placed both of those gloves on. This portion of it, the exposed part of the exterior part of my hands, has not touched any part of the inside of my, my body at this point. So that's the first step, first set of gowns. Now I will go and collect the rest of my material, and that'll begin the second phase of the gowning process. Now once you're across the management line, um, each one of these steps that you're going to see, between each one of them, we have a disinfectant um, procedure that we follow um, as we disinfect our hands with isopropyl alcohol. Um, so that's a step that I will not visually show you uh, for the sake of the video, but that is a step that I will mention each time. And, when, and at this point now, I'd be cross that line and I would make that happen. Back of the hand, isopropyl alcohol, and then I would go to the next step. The next step in our gowning process now that we're across our management line is our head cover. So again, we're going to go top to bottom on this. And so again, prepackaged, you'll open this. And just to point out, you'll notice when I open this, I open it in a certain way. So again, I'm not just ripping it open and then touching everything. I pull it out. My hands are still on the outer packaging. And then I will grab the skirt, if you will, of the head cover. Now, again, this is all stuff that you're trained on. So the first time you were to do this, it's not something you're going to have to be learning on your own. A lot of this is not intuitive. So I'll pull this out grabbing only the skirt, and the importance of this is this part of the head cover will actually be covered by the gown when we're done, and you'll see that shortly. So I will then go in, grabbing just the skirt, the part that will ultimately be covered, and then I have my head cover on. Next up now is the mask. Um, obviously our operators need to breathe, so we have a special mask here that will go over the head cover um, to, to capture all of the um, um, particles that may be generated by an operator doing what operators do, which is breathe. So, um, but again, sterile packaged, and we'll show how that comes. So you'll open that package, and what you'll do is you'll grab it by the straps, because those straps will end up going behind your head. And you will be very careful not to touch the front of that, and you'll have it designed like this, and then you will place it over the bridge of your nose, and then you will tie that behind your head. As you can see, quite an awkward step, but it's something you, you have to do. So once I have the top, I will pinch in so it will grab my nose. That will come in handy later. And then I will do the bottom straps the same way as I did the top. Now I have my gown secured to my face. I'm able to breathe. Uh, but at the same time, I'm protecting the environment from anything that might may be expelling. Now, everyone's favorite part of the aseptic gowning process is the gown. So you're going to see how this is done. Um, it does require some dexterity, um, and I will step through those as we go. And I'll try to explain each one of those steps to you and the importance of that as we go through it. Step one, the bag's moved out. And again, it's packaged in a way to... Uh, uh, give you the best chance of success in the gowning process. So the inside of the gown is what's exposed. So I'm going to grab this gown. Again, it's the inside ultimately, and I'm going to lift that up. Now what I want to do is, is create a gown that's easier for me to handle. So I'm going to reach inside. I'm going to split that gown in half. Now I'm holding the inside of the gown, and I want to get control of each one of the legs and arms. So I'll pull that up. 
I'll pull that up. As you can imagine, I'm keeping it away from my body. I now have my legs in control. I will pull an arm in. Again, using just the inside of the gown. And that final arm. Now I have a gown that's in much more control for me to gown in by still protecting the outside environment of that gown. So the first foot will go in. Keeping the gown material from touching the floor is very important. I will step in with the second gowning material, as you can see. Okay, so now you have your legs in, and now again, you have a hold of your arms, again, from the inside. So you will work one arm in, and then you will work the other arm in. And again, my hands are out. So what I need to do now is obviously zip this up. So again, I will grab from the inside of the gown, ensuring my aprons are appropriately tucked in the back and in the front. Now a nice outside to outside gown move. I can hold a little tension there, then I can grab this zipper and I can go all the way to the top. So I have full gowning here. The next thing I need to do is I have straps on my gown. So I will take those straps to make sure they're into my thumbs so my gown will not ride up for the rest of the activity. So this is the gown when I have at this stage. Now the next thing I need to do is put my goggles on. Again, prepackaged sterile goggles. I'll ensure that I grab them only by the back straps. And then my goggles are on. They can be tightened this way. So now I have full gowning coverage of my body. There is currently now no exposed skin and everything on the outside of my gown has been not touched unless it was touched by another part of the outside of my gown. So all of my handling on here has been done by touching the inside to keep it trapped within my body. And what this does in turn is protects the environment for what I'm coming in to do. Now a very important thing to keep in mind is that even though I'm in the aseptic environment, I can still cause issues. So in addition to my gowning, it's just step one in the process of protecting the environment and ultimately protecting the product from contamination because the technique that I use in there maintains the quality of my gowning. So it's not just how I gown, it's then how I carry myself once I'm inside the room. So as you mentioned earlier, we wanna make sure all the portions of the gown that might've been exposed earlier on are covered. So the last thing that I'll do before I put on my final set of gloves is I will secure my feet. So I will make sure that the outer gown now or the foot is pulled up and secured. And I will do the same thing here. It's designed to allow for that. Now I can snap it in place. That will keep everything from riding up on me during the, during the uh, filling operation. And I can now then go into the last set of gloves, the last set of sterile gloves that I'll place on before I then enter into that next aseptic environment. Perfectly designed for me to do this process. I will pull it out. We'll get these ready. From the inside cuff, We'll pull that on, and then that last set I will use from the inside, placing my final set of gloves on, and then I can reach in and grab my last cuff, and now I'm in, able to enter into the aseptic environment. If you found today interesting, how would you help Baxter develop a better gowning solution? See if you can engineer a better solution for the gowning process. What would you get to help? What processes would you use? And how would you help to solve this challenge?